In this video, we're going to find the formula for an inverse function, and we're going to do that algebraically. Now, to find a formula for an inverse function, we're essentially solving for the opposite variable in the function. For example, let's look at the conversion formula between Fahrenheit and Celsius temperatures, which is F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. Let's go ahead and solve for C in this formula. So to solve for C, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 32 from both sides, giving me F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C plus 32 minus 32. Now that leaves me with F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C. And now to get the C by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 ninths. So I'm going to say 5 ninths times left paren F minus 32 right paren equals 5 ninths times left paren 9 fifths C right paren. The left side doesn't really simplify, so let's just leave it as 5 ninths times left paren f minus 32, and on the right, 5 ninths times 9 fifths c. The fractions give us 1, and we're left with just c. So we've solved for the opposite variable c. c is 5 ninths left paren, capital F minus 32, right paren. Now, if we try to graph the original function, f equals 9 fifths c plus 32, and our new function, c equals 5 ninths, left paren, f minus 32, right paren, in Desmos, we're actually using the same variables but written in different ways, and it doesn't work in Desmos. So it's best to convert each equation to be a function of the same thing, in this case, maybe capital T for temperature. We take f equals 9 fifths c plus 32 and rewrite it as f of t equals 9 fifths t plus 32. So as you see, we're replacing the c with a t, and in this case, t is degrees Celsius. And then we'll do the same thing with the other function. We'll say c equals 5 ninths left paren, capital F minus 32, right paren is going to be converted into capital C of capital T equals 5 ninths left paren, capital T minus 32, right paren. So we're replacing F with T, but in this case, T is in degrees Fahrenheit. Now we can graph these two functions in Desmos. When we look at F of T equals 9 fifths T plus 32, and c of t equals 5 ninths left paren t minus 32 right paren, we get two lovely inverse graphs. Both of them are lines, and they are a perfect reflection over the line y equals x. So we have indeed found the inverse function by simply solving for the opposite variable. Next, we'll look at the formula for the body mass index. For an adult with height 72 inches, the formula is b of w equals, and then a fraction, and the numerator 703w, and the denominator 72 squared, where w is the weight in pounds. We want to find the inverse function for calculating BMI if we have the weight. So we're going to take this formula and solve it for W. We currently have B equals 703 W all over 72 squared. To solve this, let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the numeric part of that fraction. So we're going to multiply on the left side by 72 squared over 703. So that's times b, and we're going to multiply on the right side by 72 squared over 703, and that's times 703w over 72 squared. We can see a lot of cancellation here, so the 72 squareds cancel to make 1, the 703 cancels to make 1, and so we're left with just w on the right hand side. I'm going to Go ahead and write that backwards, if that's okay. So W, the weight, is equal to 72 squared over 703 times B, whatever the BMI is. So actually, this is written backwards. This is the function for calculating the weight of an individual if you have the BMI. The original function was the one where you would calculate the BMI if you had the weight. I thought we ought to practice with finding inverse functions if you're just given an equation and nothing else. So we're gonna find a formula for the inverse of the function f of x equals the square root of, and then under the square root, negative x minus two. I'm actually going to rewrite that as y 
equals the square root of negative x minus 2. And to find the inverse, all I need to do is solve for the opposite variable. So we're going to solve for x. Okay, so to solve for x, the first thing we're going to do is square both sides. So I'll put both sides in parentheses. That's y in parentheses squared equals, and then in parentheses, the square root of negative x minus 2, and then that whole thing is squared outside the parentheses. So now on the left, I have y squared, and on the right, I have negative x minus 2, because the square of the square root cancels out. Those are inverses of each other. Continuing to solve for x, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So y squared plus 2 equals negative x minus 2 plus 2, or just y squared plus 2 equals negative x. And then finally, I need to get rid of the negative in front of the x, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So negative 1 times left paren, y squared plus 2, right paren, and negative 1 times left paren, negative x, right paren. So I'm left with negative y squared minus 2 equals positive x. So I have the original function, y equals the square root of negative x minus 2. And I have the new function, x equals negative y squared minus 2. Now, one thing to be careful about here is that we can clearly see that the second one is some kind of quadratic function. And we know that can be kind of problematic. We've also seen that the square root of x is just half of a square root function. So there's going to need to be a domain restriction here. There's two ways you can find that domain restriction. One would be to graph both of these functions and look for it. The other would be to actually look at the domain restriction of the original graph, which we should know how to do, right? If we look at that part under the square root, negative x minus 2, we know that negative x minus 2 needs to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that negative x needs to be greater than or equal to 2, or dividing by negative 1 on both sides, that would give us positive x is less than or equal to negative 2. So my domain of the original function is x is less than or equal to negative 2, which means that in my new function, if I reverse the x and y, I know that y has to be less than or equal to negative 2. Now, there are other ways we could write this. We have the inverse, but we typically write an inverse as f inverse. So let's do f superscript negative 1, and I'm going to do f inverse in terms of y is equal to negative y squared minus 2 for the domain restriction y is less than or equal to negative 2. We'll do one more. We'll find the inverse of what we call a rational function. That is a fraction with algebraic terms in both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, it's f of x equals, and then a fraction bar, in the numerator x minus 2, and in the denominator x plus 3. Again, I'm going to rewrite this with a y equals to start with y equals a fraction bar with x minus 2 in the numerator and x plus 3 in the denominator. We need to solve for x. Let's just start by removing the fraction issue from this problem. I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 3. So I'm going to do y left paren x plus 3 equals this whole fraction x minus 2 over x plus 3 in parentheses, and I'm multiplying that by x plus 3. So I've multiplied by x plus 3 in parentheses on both sides. On the left side, I'm just going to do this distribution. So y times x and y times 3 gives me xy plus 3y. On the right, the x plus 3s will reduce to be 1, leaving me with x minus 2. Now I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm going to use a little trick here by moving the x's to the same side and everything else to the other side. So I'm going to start by subtracting an x from both sides. So xy plus 3y minus x equals x minus 2 minus x. On the left, I'm just going to regroup xy minus x plus 3y equals the x's make 0 on the right, leaving me with just negative 2. And now I'll move that y term to the other side, giving me xy minus x plus 3y minus 3y equals negative 2 minus 3y. So on the left, I just have xy minus x. The 3y's make 0. And on the right, negative 2 minus 3y. Now, how does this help me? Well, I'm trying to solve for x. And for the first time, I have the x's on one side and everything else on the other side. And now I can factor out an x. If I factor an x out of both of these terms, I'd have x times left paren y minus 1. 
and that equals negative 2 minus 3y. Well now, I can divide both sides by that factor y minus 1, and I should finally have the x by itself. So I divide on the left by y minus 1, and I divide on the right by y minus 1. This gives me x, because the y minus 1's reduced to make 1. So x equals negative 2 minus 3y over y minus 1. So we now have an inverse function. And that inverse function I can rewrite as an f with a superscript negative 1. It's all written in terms of y. So I'm going to write f negative 1 of y equals negative 2 minus 3y over y minus 1. Now do remember that if you want to graph both of these functions, you need them both in terms of the same variable with different names. So you might consider graphing something like the original f of x equals x minus 2 over x plus 3, and then a new function, let's call it g of x, which is going to be negative 2 minus 3x over x minus 1. You'll notice that it is the same as the function we just wrote with y's, only we're now writing it with x's instead, so that we get a common variable.